Wow, I'm Artifacts of Mars. Oops. Uh, <laughs> I'm putting this on my can uh, car, so I'm having to needle down a little bit. I wanted to do a little nature walk today, and if this takes off, we'll do some more. Uh, this is the right time of year. A del delicate miracle is happening. It happens every year. We tend to become complacent and we tend to think that we take it all for granted. That miracle is the miracle of the sap. That's why I'm here today. We're going to talk about tree sap and why that uh, starts to rise early in the season. You see, scientists don't really know the reason. This is the point. We'll go ahead and take a little walk. This is going to be limited in time, because I'm limited in time. I'm doing this before work, but we'll do the best we can. Stand by. Okay. Zoom in a little bit. This is Rush, New York. I've never really gone out in this park before. Now, everything you're going to see is unrehearsed. Everything. If I come upon a person, a critter, there's no rehearsals, there's no actors, no nothing. What you might be hearing, uh, assuming my camera's picking that up, is a Canada goose. Canadian geese around here, uh, there's a whole bunch of them that winter here, they no longer migrate. It has to do with western New York's agricultural pro uh, stuff, because in... Uh, Western New York we grow a lot of corn and other crops and they've learned to like it. So they basically stay here year round now. There's a hunting season on them and so forth. I don't really want to hunt them because you got to put steel through your gun and steel ruins. Uh, steel shot ruins your gun. Or you can pay, you know, 40, 50 bucks a box for something like Bismuth Shot, which sucks. Anyway, let's get on topic here. Now, we're going to look up. I don't know what trees are for the most part until I actually see leaves on them. Leaves will not start coming out. For any viewer who lives in a tropical climate, you don't know what a deciduous tree is. Basically, they drop their leaves in the fall because it gets cold. And this is a tree's method of coping with the cold. And then when it gets warm again in the spring, leaves start to grow. Everybody around here understands this, but there may be a few folks from around the world if you're watching this video, you want an explanation, that's what it is. I don't know what this creek is, by the way. I can look it up on a map. And find out if I wanted to. So we're going to take a look at... Maybe elm. I'm not really sure. Some leaves I know, sometimes some I don't. But you can see leaves were all dropped here in the fall. See, what happens in the fall is... As the days get shorter and it gets colder, there's some kind of a build-up at the base of the leaves on a deciduous tree and 
that chokes off the flow of nutrients and also kills off the green chlorophyll and allows the reds and the yellows and orange, whatever, show through. And this is why you get all these spectacular colors in the fall. Now, the leaves die. Like I said, this is a coping mechanism that everybody in this area knows why trees do this. They're getting ready for winter. But run about mid to late run about mid to late uh, February another delicate little miracle occurs. And this is one we're going to go over. See, deep inside the tree you get towards mid late February, somewhere in that time frame the tree sap starts to flow. A lot of scientists really don't know the reason why this happens. Other than it's obviously got something to do with uh, rising temperatures. Temperature rises in the day, falls at night, and those two extremes stimulate the flow of sap from the roots to the leaves. See, if this doesn't happen, then the, I should say the buds. If this doesn't happen, the buds don't grow. Because the buds have to be nourished like this. They have to be nourished by the sugars and starches, whatever, that are in the sap until they can begin to photosynthesize. Until they get opened up and start growing. Right? That's what has to happen. Uh, and once they start growing, then they can make their own food. But what they're doing is they're sending food down to the roots uh, to the, of the tree to make sure that to nourish it. And this cycle is repeated year after year after year. Now, boy, I couldn't ask for a nicer day. Temperatures are about mid 40s. Sunshine. So, what happens in spring? Like I said, you get those uh, warming, cooling cycles, and that gets the sap to flow. It moves its way up through the tree by a process that nobody really knows what it is. You can find all sorts of explanations on the internet, and none of them are really valid. Truth is that science doesn't know why the trees do this. Uh, The problem is that there's a force involved in plants that really isn't understood by science. There are two forces that are understood by science. One is capillary action. If you've ever taken one of those uh, really narrow stra straws and you stick it down in water, uh, the surface tension causes it to rise up on the straw just a little bit. That's called capillary action. And the thinner the straw, the more it rises. The second force that's understood by science, I'm going to look down the trail here, the second force that's understood by science is known as transpiration pull. Now what is transpiration pull? Transpiration pull happens when water evaporates from the leaves. Now, there's a posted sign that's bullshit. This is uh, public property. Anyway, transpiration pull is where water evaporates from the leaves and the tree tries to basically replenish it or in a green plant any green plant 
it evaporates through the pores and then that creates like a little vacuum and the sap and liquids are pushed up through the xylem which is the plant's main veins that heads on up through plant, tree, whatever. I'll be okay as long as I sit on the path. You know a, a lot of jerks around here who uh, put posted signs on public land. I've seen that before. Anyway, so those are the two forces between transpiration pull and uh, capillary action. Liquids inside a plant can go perhaps a few inches. That's about it. There's a third force that's not understood. And this is a force that really interests me uh, here. Because, like I said, you look at any one of these trees, all of them look dead at the moment. And none of them are. Now, they're making one or two dead ones, but they're not dead. Obviously not. Well, not obviously. But anybody who knows how deciduous trees grow knows that they are not dead. They're dormant. That's because of the harsh New York winters. This is a common thing here in the North American continent. And the buds are waiting for the sap to get to them. When, once the sap gets to them, the buds start to grow. Okay, we all know this. But like I said, there's a force there that isn't understood. I'm trying to pick up that crow. Common crows are permanent residents all over this area. They're rather annoying, but who cares? I've shot a number of them. They don't taste very good. I eat what I shoot. So we're going to take a little walk along and we're going to look at the dead trees. <laughs> or what looks like dead trees. These are mixed hardwoods there. All of them hanging down. I don't know exactly what's going on here as far as how far this goes back. I think this is Lehigh Valley Trail, if I'm not mistaken. And I gotta uh, take time out here because it's a little soggy. I'm not gonna go much further back, to be honest. It's due to lack of time rather than anything else. Lehigh Valley Trail is a really nice place uh, to go for a nature walk. I did a crop circle investigation there once. I believe this one is a birch, if I'm not mistaken. It's a peculiar bark that you see, that, that silverish bark. That's what gives them away. But, you know, the uh, miracle of the sap has already been well underway here. This is March 29th. 28th or 29th? 29th, I think. And, uh... Miracle of the Sap is already underway for this area for this year. The Sap is running up through all these trees and nobody really knows why. Beautiful, isn't it? I mean, we all love trees, we all appreciate them. 
but nobody knows why they do this. Now here's an interesting feature. You see this mound? I have no idea. I'm going by the theory that those uh, posted signs are for real, even though they shouldn't be. But, uh, so I'm not going to go on it. I'm going to stay right on the footpath. So, there you have a mysterious little mound. I don't know what it is. See if we can zoom in on it a little. A lot of odd anomalies like that around here. Now, I talked, I did a video on uh, using spinach to repair people's heart valves. Should be said that a trees or plants, green plants circulatory system isn't exactly the same as ours. We have a closed loop circulatory system and ours is designed to take lots and lots of pressure. Theirs isn't. Well, maybe the xylem and the you know, redwood can take pressure. There has to be some kind of pressure. It's just that science doesn't know why this happens. But in about a few weeks, probably about th two to three, this area is going to be all green. It's a miracle of life. Life has been dormant here for months, and now it's coming back. Apparent death, but it's not death. But that's nature for you. Nature can all, all, often uh, fool you into thinking things that aren't true. One thing I'm finding a little bit curious is lack of robins. See, usually robins are here right about time spring arrives. And they are running late. I thought I saw one, but I don't think it was a robin. Only saw the underbelly of the bird. It could have been a number of different birds. So, I don't know. I'm not seeing robins. Red-winged blackbirds are another migratory bird. They'll be here later. Red-winged blackbirds don't like cold. So I'll be here later. I'm a little dismayed that I'm not seeing as many birds as would be considered normal for this area this time of year. I hear the usual ones. I'm hearing at work I'm starting to hear the killdeers, which even come out at night and there's all these parking lot lights and I think they are fooled and think it's day. And killdeer goes, killdeer, killdeer, killdeer. Something like that. That's why they call them kill deers. I'm going to have to wrap this. Uh, I'm going to have to wrap this because I need to get to work. Um, but I want you to remember, whenever you look at these trees... I want you to remember that there's a del delicate miracle that happens every year. And science cannot explain why. I'm going to say that again. Science cannot explain why this happens. I'm going to recap. There's transpiration pull and capillary action. They cannot by themselves account for what I call the miracle of the sap. I'm Artifacts of Mars. If I actually get some viewers on this, we might do a few more of these ma nature walks. I have a place in mind already. I love doing this type of thing. 
This is Artifacts of Mars. I'm signing off from Rush, New York. Appreciate your attention. And I hope to do this again sometime.